So uh, I am here to give us an update on the Biological Resources Working Group. Um, as a general comment, I want to say that we have a tendency to sometimes call this the Biological Standards Working Group. And as the Standards Working Group is getting bigger, we're going to do a better job of making sure we keep to the name Biological Resources. So just uh, as the general statement. And I'm speaking today for the Working Group and for um, Incarnita and myself. So um, we're going to talk a little bit about the history and organization of this working group, um, our achievements for uh, 2020, really, um, leadership directions proposed as a, as a future directions proposed as a motion and leadership plan also as a motion. So this working group um, was created in 2017 at the third um, ARC meeting um, in, in Rockville. Uh, Maryland, um, which was the first meeting that I attended, and it was very exciting, and I was happy to be a part of it. Um, it was founded to meet the needs to better control air seek data, um, and at that time, Incarnita and I uh, joined as co-leaders. Um, currently, we have 19 um, me uh, members, um, several of which joined after uh, the last meeting in Genoa. Um, this is a picture of, uh, that we took of the working group uh, in Genoa uh, last year, um, and that was a wonderful meeting. Um, we have had bi-weekly online meetings um, with meetings associated, although I'm not sure we've done such a great job of sharing that with the community, so um, action item there. Um, and uh, we've done yearly reporting um, to the, the working group. Here's the list of our, um, our, our members. Um, some of them uh, are, attend meetings regularly, but many of them have participated um, in the review of the journal article that we've been in the process of writing. And um, we've had uh, new members actually join uh, recently. Uh, so uh, it's exciting to have people to continue to join the group. So overall, the goal of our group is to provide uh, the air community with biological calibrators and reagents for standards and for harmonization of um, air seek experiments. And our initial aims and tasks uh, was to create a questionnaire to survey scientists regarding their uh, needs for standards and calibrators. Um, for their air seek um, experiments, to write a manuscript reviewing biological standards and other um, analytical controls um, using the questionnaire results, and to establish uh, a collection of such standards for inter-lab comparisons and ultimately um, for communal sale, something that would be uh, available to people uh, readily for, for use and therefore uh, standard use. Um, and to write a second manuscript um, supporting the use of these standards. So um, in terms of our achievements, um, we have um, completed the survey um, and um, we, we also had, after the survey, we did um, a series of small seminars um, where people who had um, commented in the survey that they were using biological standards presented those to the working group. Um, we had, uh, we wrote a manuscript uh, reviewing the biological standards and other analytical con controls using the questionnaire results. Um, and then more recently, uh, we had an introduction of the working group to the Euroclonality NGS group. Um, and yesterday we had a mini symposium on the biological standards. Um, so first to the survey. Um, so this survey was open for quite a lot of uh, 2019. We had the survey before uh, the meeting in Genoa, um, but at the meeting, um, we realized that uh, we actually had access to more people. So we reopened up the survey. Um, the survey was 26 questions. Um, we asked general questions about um, the investigators and their research programs, questions about their samples. Um, questions about amplification and uh, library preparation methods, um, and then questions about their use of controls um, and calibrators. And we ended up with um, 100 participants um, filling out the survey. And this is a snapshot of some of the data that, that we um, acquired. Um, we got people from um, around the world. Um, almost everybody uses humans. Most people are using IG, um, and then there is a wide variety of um, biological questions that people are addressing with their AirSeq uh, analysis. 
Zooming in on the, the idea of controls and calibrators, um, what we did find was that people did feel that there was a need for controls and calibrators to control for all of these different aspects of um, our air seat studies, um, but only about 50% of the people within each of those groups um, were actively using controls. Um, and then the other thing we did find is of the people who were using controls, there was actually a wide array of different kinds of controls that we were using. Um, so many people are interested in controls, but there's no gold standard used. Um, and um, controlling parameters does depend on um, the experiments or biological questions that uh, the researchers are using. So as I said, we had a series of sessions um, where people presented their work. Um, so we had some from Cy Reddy's group, uh, Johanna Schuch and um, Chris Tipton all presented. Um, there were some shared conclusions from those presentations, which is that everyone was using synthetic fragments. Um, all three of these groups, interesting, were using IG controls, which I guess isn't maybe that surprising considering 75% of the people we surveyed were doing IG, so maybe that's consistent. Um, these were mainly um, deal, um, aimed towards multiplex PCR controls, um, although uh, Johannes is also developing his for race. Um, and so it appears that there uh, was really, once again, no gold standard identified and um, more work needs to be done within the group to identify what the next steps might be. Um, a point towards the manuscript. So we did write a manuscript. Um, here is a, a list of the authors and the active authors um, who participated in the writing of the manuscript. And thank you, everyone. Um, it was divided into four sections, an introduction describing the applications um, in the variety of techniques that I presented before. So that's figure one. A presentation on the needs and requirements for controls. I think that was figure four three or four, um, a summary of current available controls and standards, um, and then a proposal for areas of prioritization for current use and future development. Um, this was approved by the ARC community. Thank you, everyone. Um, and it was submitted um, for publication to eLife. Um, we actually pinged them yesterday or this morning. Thanks, Incarnita, for that. Um, and it's still, they're still considering uh, the review process right now. So uh, no word back, right, as of, as of this morning. So um, Incarnita and Christian uh, met with um, the Eurocolonalities NGS organization, um, uh, which is, uh, I think, a really important thing for us to do. Um, they've been around for quite a bit longer and have done a lot of work in this and other areas. And so um, being able to align with them um, and uh, learn from their experiences um, will be quite uh, helpful. Um, and um, would they also agree to participate in the uh, mini symposium that we did, um, as well as agree to have further meetings um, with this group and um, with other groups, um, uh, and those are being organized now. So really excited about this uh, advancement here. So a couple of words about the mini symposium that we had yesterday um, on current standards use and development. Um, we had six researchers that introduced their current um, work. Um, as I said, it was, it was yesterday and um, we had members uh, of the Euroclonality group as well as members of the work, working group um, or of the ARC community. Um, I thought that it was a really successful meeting. Um, we had about 20 attendees um, and a discussion that followed the presentations. Um, it gave the group several ideas of what directions to go in next. Um, I apologize, we did not record um, the meeting uh, and uh, that was something we intended on doing, but we, we did not. We actually have a plan for our next meeting um, to go over the notes that I took and summarize it. Um, and we can share that with the working group or with and, and, and the participants of the, of the uh, meeting or anyone else who's interested, just let me know and we can, we can share a summary of that meeting with you. So our plans for future directions, um, you know, it's hard to say how to, how to say this, right? But we actually think that what we want to do is going to be big and expensive. And so um, we are thinking that really one of the next steps is to design a plan and apply for funding. Um, this will really help people be um, engaged in the work and focus on the work um, and be able to justify taking the time um, to, uh, to do the work for uh, developing these standards, which we think are so important. Um, 
one of the, the things we discussed in the, in the working group yesterday was that Incarnita has done a, a really nice comparative study, and I think she's going to present on that um, in uh, the next couple of days um, on looking at different um, T cell air seek uh, analysis methods. And we're looking um, to do a, a similar study with um, B cells. So, in this way, we can compare current analysis methods. Um, using um, the you know a, a standard cell type um, sent to uh, different people, and we can uh, compare the reproducibility um, and and to some extent um, the accuracy of the data uh, that way. Um, but longer term, we do still want to identify and collect suitable DNA or RNA calibrators and controls or cell mixtures um, for um, for air seek. Um, so, um, you know, this is, as I said, quite a, a big project, which would, I, um, which would uh, require identifying members of the community able to uh, define statistical measurements for the AirSeq um, experiments and validation. Um, so this is um, something we can do in collaboration with other working groups, perform interlab comparisons, perform outreach to academics, governments, and commercial uh, partners to disseminate the identifiers and validate controls as well as make sure that we are defining legal requirements for distribution um, if that's necessary. So um, Incarnita and I have um, both requested to step down the leadership role. We've done this for a couple of years. Um, and um, obviously, we didn't get the message of the other working groups um, that, uh, that potential replacements need to go uh, to Pam. Um, we have um, a few people who have volunteered to, to take over. Um, so we will. Um, coordinate with Pam uh, to follow the correct process for the transition of power. Um, currently, um, as I said before, we have 19 members. Um, we will send an opt-out survey um, probably after this meeting, um, but at the time that um, we do that, we also are welcoming uh, new members. We have been very focused on the publication, but as we're transitioning to the next set, um, of, of big questions, which is what are the standards that we should be using um, and how should we do that testing? Um, I really encourage people who are interested in doing that active work um, in, in, in volunteering and in joining us. So thank you, everyone. I guess I hit stop sharing now. Sure. Um, so thank <laughs> you, Maggie, for that great presentation. Um, and yes, I, as, a, as a, a participant in the mini pre-symposium that uh, the Biological Resources Working Group put on, uh, I thought it was great. And uh, there's certainly a lot that we learned um, from the various speakers. So, so I, we have a lot to do and, uh, and it, a bright future ahead of us. Um, so are there any uh, questions from any of the other panelists or attendees? I think uh, you can escape without any questions, Maggie. Mm -hmm. All right, thanks everyone. <laughs> um, all right, so let's move on in the interest of trying to get some time back here. Um, so thank you again, uh, Maggie and, and Carnita and all the members of the Biological Resources Working Group.